Hello, everybody. It's John with Christian Country Living. How are you doing this morning? I hope you're all doing fantastically well and that God is continuing to bless you. I hope you're letting your light shine in your community. Uh, today, we're going to do another exciting study from Bible readings from the home. These are Bible studies that you can do um, from the comfort of your home. And it's a question and answer format. And the answers come directly from God's Word, the Bible. But before we begin our study today, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer to ask God to be with us. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that we can study your word in freedom and in peace. We pray uh, for our world right now is uh, very troubled and uh, it's, it's very sick and decaying and crumbling around us. Um, so we pray that we will take advantage of this time to study um, in relative freedom right now and that you would... Um, heal our hearts and heal us as a nation. Please be with us now as we read and study and help us to properly understand and we ask that you would apply these things to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, our lesson today, actually we're starting a new section. Section number three, The Way to Christ. And the first topic is faith. So we're going to jump right into that. This is number page number 88 in the scanned pages of the link that I'm going to put in the description. And it is number 98, I believe, if you're going by the PDF um, pages. Okay, let's jump right in. Number one, what is faith declared to be? Incidentally, um, if you uh, need to pause this video to look up the verses I'm going to give you, I'd encourage you to do that. What is faith declared to be? Hebrews 11.1 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, there's, there's a lot in there. Um, but it's, it's, it's the end result of what you, what you hope for, but you don't have. It's the, it says the evidence of things not seen. In other words, it's there. The result is there. God is going to fulfill his promises. But we have to believe that when he speaks, he means what he says, and he is performing it in our lives. Number two, how necessary is faith? This is Hebrews 11.6, same chapter. Actually, Hebrews 11 is often referred to as the Hall of Faith chapter. <laughs> Verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Wow, so we need to uh, have faith to please God. So it's pretty important that we understand what faith is. It's important for us to learn a little bit more about this topic. Number three, is mere assent to divine truth sufficient? In other words, if I just say, well, yes, I believe um, this truth or that Bible truth, I believe it, is that acknowledgement enough? James 2.19 Thou believest that there is one God. Thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. <laughs> okay. So James here, that's James 2.19. He's saying, oh, you believe. That's great. Well, you know what? The demons also believe. <laughs> so in other words, I think we can uh, safely assume that uh, it is not enough simply to believe the truth. The truth has to hit home in our hearts, and we have to be settled in the truth in our minds. Okay. <laughs> Number four, what is required besides a belief in the existence of God? This is also Hebrews 11.6. This is uh, the last part of it. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Number five, from whom does faith come? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And it goes on, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Uh, that was a pretty close paraphrase. Check it out. That I quoted verses 9 and 10 as well. Number six. Why did God raise Christ from the dead? Who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead? 
and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. I'm sorry, I didn't give the reference. First Peter one twenty one. So God raised Christ from the dead that your faith and hope might be in God. The resurrection gives us faith, gives us hope that what God has promised as far as uh, living forever with him in heaven, in our eternal home. James says that our citizenship, or the old King James says our conversation, same thing, is in heaven. And it gives us hope that uh, since God has fulfilled all these promises from the dead, er, from the past, and he has been raised from the dead, that he is also able to raise us from the dead, and he is also able to take us to heaven with him. Number seven, what is Christ's relation to this faith? Hebrews 12, 2. And by the way, we're going to pick up the pace here. We have uh, quite a few questions and answers and verses to get through. So <laughs> Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Christ started it and he will finish it. Number eight. What is the basis of faith? Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing how? By the word of God. Bible study is very important. To helping us build our faith. Number nine, what relation does faith bear to knowledge? Hebrews 11.3 Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Number ten, again, we're rocketing through some of these. <laughs> I was looking ahead and we've got a ways to go here. <laughs> Number ten, what principle is genuine faith actuated? By what principle is it actuated? Galatians 5, 6. In Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Faith and love go together. Number 11. Of what is faith a fruit? This is Galatians 5, 22. Many of you know this one or are familiar with it, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, Gentleness, goodness, faith. Faith is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And we need to ask God to inculcate those fruits into our lives. And we need to uh, spend time with God because how do you, how do you get to know somebody? Like, in, like an earthly friend. How do you get to know them? Like how did you get to know your wife? Why did you decide, or your husband, like why did you decide like, hey, I want to spend the rest of my life with this person? <laughs> did you just, you know see them and pick them off off the street yeah you'll do i i just need a wife or i just need a husband you know <laughs> probably not i think most of you probably spent you know many months uh, perhaps many years um spending time with this person uh, you hung out with them you you went bowling with them you went to the park you you went fishing or whatever you did um to, to learn what this person was like in lots of different uh, life situations and uh, to figure out if it was a, a good match, if this was a, a marriage that God could bless, right? <laughs> so um, we, we, don't, we don't really grow in our relationship with people unless we invest time. And we need to invest time in our relationship with God uh, just like any other relationship. Okay, uh, we are going to number 12, 1 Thessalonians 1, 3. What in the early church showed living faith? 1 Thessalonians, uh, Thessalonians 1, 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. Okay, I think we'll just keep going. Number 13, what is necessary in order that the preaching of the gospel may be profitable? Hebrews 4, 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So, important distinction. You can hear the truth, but if you don't have the faith to believe it, then it won't be profitable to you. And even faith is a gift. It is a fruit of the Spirit. So we need to ask God to give us faith and to exercise it. Number 14, what is the character of any act or service not performed in faith? Romans 14, 23, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Wow. We're not going to really unpack that, but I just want you to think about that. 
ponder that through the week. Number 15. How does Abraham's experience show that obedience and faith are inseparable? Hebrews 11.8 By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place he should, which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. So we could say, by faith Abraham, ellipses point, obeyed. Faith and obedience go together, contrary to popular belief. How do we know that Abraham had faith? Is it simply because Abraham said, yes, I, I believe that God will um, do these things? No. We know, we know that he had faith because he took action on what he believed. Number 16. With what, therefore, is the faith of Jesus joined? This one's in Revelation 14:12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That's an important point to make. God's last day church will be keeping the Ten Commandments. All ten of them, by the way. Take a look at that list of Ten Commandments and ask yourself if there's any of those ten that are specifically being ignored. Even one that may be being ignored by most of the churches of today. I'll just leave that as a little food for thought for you. Let's move on. Number 17. In what other statement is the same truth emphasized? James 2.20. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Faith and works, we could just say faith and action, faith and obedience? And by the way, obedience is not legalism. Obedience is simply doing what Christ has asked us to do, or maybe refraining from doing something when he asks us to do it. And that is faith, doing something even when it doesn't make sense to you, and refraining from doing something even when it doesn't make sense to you, but is something that God has commanded. So we obey, and we see the positive fruits in our lives. Number 18, how is faith brought to perfection? James 2.22, same chapter. See thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Okay, so again, um, emphasizing that it's not enough to just assent to the truth. Yes, I, I believe this, or I believe that. Well, how, how do we know? Uh, if I said that, uh, to my wife, yes, uh, I love you, dear. Well, and I, <laughs> I was continually doing things, you know, to you know irritate her and disrespect her. But I still said, well, I love you. I, I said it. What, what's your problem? Like, why are you having such a tone and an attitude? <laughs> I told you I loved you. But if by my works, if by my... Um, not obedience in this case, because you, know, you don't obey your husband or wife. You know what I mean. Um, my actions, okay, my actions are showing <laughs> that I really don't love my wife. What do your actions and what do my actions say about my love for God? Again, uh, I don't want this to seem like salvation by works, because I definitely do not believe in that. Um, but I do believe that um, Jesus lives inside of us, and he prompts us uh, to do the things that please him, okay? So don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid to obey, okay? <laughs> I'm getting off in the weeds here. Let's, let's keep going. Number 19, what is the result of faith's being put to the test? James 1, 3. The trying of your faith works patience. So sometimes when we're going through trying times, which many of us have been going through um, in one degree or another, when we go through those, it helps us to develop patience. And patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit from what we read back in Galatians 5.22. So it is, there is something good to our faith being tried, even though um, I don't really suggest you go up to somebody who uh, is going through an extremely hard time and being like, don't worry, you know, the trying of your faith worketh patience. You know, that's probably not going to be well received um, at that moment. <laughs> okay. Um, number 20, what relationship to God is established by faith? 
Galatians 3.26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus rather. So by faith, we are counted as children of God. Number 21, how do the children of God walk? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, very good. Let's move on. Number 22. Upon what condition may one expect answers to prayer? James 1, 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So we can't be wishy-washy when we're interacting with God. If you ask for something and you believe sincerely that it is God's will, that you have that thing, then you need to believe that God is going to work it out for you, okay? Like we can't be, you know, just going back and forth, like pray for something, but well, I don't really think God is going to actually do that, but I'll pray for it, you know. And sometimes God actually will, <laughs> as a rebuke almost to us, to our lack of faith, he will still work it out for us. That's been the case in my life many times, but we need to believe um, that we have what we ask for um, when it's according to God's will. Number 23, just a few questions left here. To what parts of the ancient armor is faith compared? Ephesians 6.16, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And 1 Thessalonians 5.8, Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Okay, so the shield and the breastplate are an allegory for... Um, faith protecting the believer. Number 24. What chapter in the Bible is devoted to faith? You should already know this one. I already gave you the answer in the back of the book for this one earlier. <laughs> uh, the 11th chapter of Hebrews. In verses 33 to 38 are summarized the victories of the heroes of faith. And by the way, take a look at the, those verses because you will notice that none of those people... Um, you know, had faith simply by saying, yeah, I, I believe I have faith. No, they, all of them did something, okay? And that demonstrated that they had faith. They didn't do those things to show that they had faith. They had faith, and that faith worked in their lives. Does that make sense? Number 25, what gives victory in our conflicts with the world? First John 5, 4. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. <laughs> okay, that's probably enough of that, huh? <laughs> Thanks for putting up with that excruciating 10 seconds of singing. Um, number 26, <laughs> last question. <laughs> what is the ultimate purpose of faith? Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. First Peter 1, 8 and 9. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys and girls. And this has been John with Christian Country Living. I hope you keep watching these videos. I hope that you will uh, take what we read today to heart. Don't believe anything that I said just because I said it. Compare these things. Search the Bible for yourselves and see what it has to say. Pray for the Holy Spirit to accompany you as you do that. Till next time, this has been John with Christian Country Living, reminding you and your family to pray, plan, and prepare. And we'll see you next time.